Thank you, everyone. Uh, Cold meeting order of the CDTA Board of Directors. It's uh, Wednesday, June 28th. Uh, we have a quorum in the room and other board members uh, by video. Uh, we'll start with the approval of the minutes of the last meeting, May 31st. Can I have a motion on that? Thank you, Dan. Second, Mike. Any changes, suggestions? Nope. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? It's approved. Uh, we'll move on to uh, recognitions. We have Jamie. a number of them. Okay. Who's first? Mr. Cohen. <laughs> All right, well, Mr. Rich Cohen is a transportation supervisor with us and celebrating 20 years of service. So Rich had a few careers before he started with CDTA. He is a dual military veteran. He spent four years in the Navy and six in the Army. And he also fought in the Persian Gulf War. So thank you for your service before we go any further. Rich worked for Greyhound from 1996 to 2003, driving buses, and then moved into a management role. His office was in downtown Albany, and that's where he met, many of you in this room probably know, our infamous undercover CDTA recruiter, also known as... Mr. Joe Fuller. <laughs> so Joe would lay over near the Greyhound station and would visit with Rich and eventually convinced him to become a bus operator for CDTA. When Rich started in 2003, he started like everyone else did at that time as a part-time star operator. And from there, he transitioned to fix route, driving the 10 on Western Avenue. Rich has worked in every division and has driven every route. We appreciated his flexibility over the past 15 years when he served as an operator. In 2018, he was promoted to a transportation supervisor and has been working in Schenectady ever since. Rich has won several awards over the years for customer service and safety. And he says one of his favorite events to attend at CDTA is the veterans function. In his free time, he likes to stay active. And as a cancer survivor, he appreciates time spent with his family and his grandkids. He said that retirement depends on his health, but he is hoping for a few more great years. Congratulations, Rich. Yep. All right, Mr. Gambrell. Mike Gambrell is celebrating 20 years of service. So before joining CDTA, Mike was driving a bus. He has 20 years in the automotive industry and says he really enjoyed getting to know the capital region and its people while he drove. When he started in 2003, he was a part-time star operator for three years and then promoted to a star supervisor and then transferred to fixed route as a supervisor. So about eight years ago, he decided to go back on the road as a bus operator and tells us he just couldn't stay away. Mike has stepped into the role of ATU Local 1321's secretary. He is a member of the ATU executive team and spends a lot of time working with employees and helping them understand work <coughs> rules and job situations. <coughs> so Mike, another flexible guy, he said that he's driven just about every route in our service area, and he says that he really enjoys working the extra list. One of his proudest moments is what we're doing for him today, and that's recognizing him for 20 years of service. He enjoys getting to know his coworkers. He says that they always have great stories to tell. And one of the many things that keeps Mike coming back each day uh, during the holidays is the fact that customers appreciate the work that we do and the work that Mike does, getting them where they need to go during the holidays. In his free time, Mike enjoys hanging out with his family and his grandkids. And he said he's hoping for another five years before retirement rolls around. Congratulations, Mike, on 20 years. Thanks, Mike. Um, all right, next up, celebrating 35 years is Steve Mulkley. <laughs> Cat calls. <laughs> so Steve 
is one of our master technicians and currently works in the facilities department. So before joining CDTA, Steve worked at Price Chopper and Hoffman's Car Wash. He was just 21, he, 21 years old. Were you 21 years old in 1988? Is that factual? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, just to, I just had to double check that. I wasn't really sure if that was accurate or not. <laughs> 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 Great, and then today will be my last day of work as well. <laughs> That's the first time she's ever been speechless. <laughs> All right, well, back to the point of what we're doing here today. Um, so he said when he heard about a job at CDTA through a friend, he wanted to apply. And for the past 35 years, Steve has worked in various positions from cleaner to master technician, and he's currently a member of our facilities department, where he has been for the last couple of years. Steve says that he likes that every day is different, and he appreciates the many training opportunities and friends that he's made at CDTA. Steve served as our business agent of the ATU for several years, which represents, of course, our unionized workforce. And before serving as the business agent, Steve handled union duties as a grievance rep. The business agent job is more than full-time, and Steve certainly put in that time and much more working with our employees in, on all kinds of issues. He also led the successful negotiations for two collective bargaining agreements. After serving as business agent, he transferred to our facilities department and has been a great mentor to some of our newer employees. In his free time, Steve enjoys fishing, hunting, four-wheeling, and boating, and he says he also likes to go to Turning Stone Casino and listen to music. Steve says he has a few more years to go before he retires, but he is looking forward to spending more time with his wife, Michelle, and his two sons. So Steve, congratulations, and thank you for 35 years. And certainly not least is Teddy Roars, who is one of our Albany operators celebrating 35 years of service. Well, before coming to CDTA, Teddy and his dad ran the Gateway Diner for seven years. And during that time, he was also working for the New York State Division of Tax and Finance. So that should tell you something about Teddy and the hard work that he puts in here every single day. Looking for something a little more stable, Teddy answered a job ad that he saw in the newspaper, and he was hired by CDTA and says never looked back. He started out like many of our bus operators did, as we've been saying, 35 years ago, driving part-time in Star. From there, he moved to fixed route, and that's where he has been for almost his entire CDTA career. The first route he ever drove was Route 10, which operates along the Western Avenue corridor. He currently drives the number one, which services the Central Avenue corridor. Teddy has a strong record as a rodeo contender and has earned several safety awards along the way. He says his favorite part of the job is his interaction with people, meeting and helping them, and meeting different people from all walks of life. He says it really gives him job satisfaction. He's called CDTA home for the past 35 years because he says it's stable and because of the great benefits and, in his words, his awesome coworkers. In his spare time, he enjoys gardening, fishing, and going to the movies with his girlfriend. And you'll also hear him cheering for the Bronx Bombers from April to September. <laughs> Hang in there, Carl. Hang in there. Maybe October. That's it. Teddy says that retirement may only be a couple of years away, but he says, who is Cal? So, Teddy, congratulations on your Is that 70? I'm doing the math real quick. 110 years or so. I got off by a little bit. Um, but I got all Steve earlier. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, no, no. It's interesting. He, he probably isn't. Well, who knows? But, but, but you know, it wasn't uncommon for guys like him to start at 21 or 22 years and, and you know, put in a career, and that's what's well, changed a little bit, you know, and that's a little bit of our struggle, but all these guys, um, these are, these are, I mean, 
the Teddy thing sums it up, you know, working at the diner, working full time at the state. He, he's not afraid of hard work. Steve Mopin, you know, and, and Zach's here. He had the thankless job of being business agent. You know, it, it, it is thankless. I don't know how they do that. It's a thankless job. Uh, being a union rep, being a, an officer is a thankless job because the only people who go to you are the ones that have issues. You know, the, 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 the Teddy Roars never yeah. goes. Yeah. <laughs> and he just comes to work and does his thing every day. You know, Rich Cohen, I saw Rich Friday night. You know, I was going, I was, my wife and I were at the um, American Cancer Society event at Saratoga National. There's, there's, there's Rich, you know, leading the driver. He's pretty young. He's like, this kid is... 21? How old was that? Yeah. 20, 23. 23, he just started. He said he doesn't know the left or the right. You, you know, but you see these guys. This is, this is the salt of the earth. This is, this is the best we have to offer. They're fabulous. Thanks, guys. Every one of you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. But, you know, um, we have, a little, we have a little special connection, right? Um, um, we, we just say go Gales. Um, kids went to Iona. Uh, and, you know, but Mike's another guy. He, he's up in Glens Falls a lot now, you know, in the summer. He, he doesn't mind, you know, an hour up, an hour back, in eight hours or however he's there. And it's, nice, it's a nice way to know that, you know, we're already transitioning. By the way, Half of the operators right now on the trolley service, their seasonal trolley, are the Mike Gambrells of CDTA. So, so thanks. Didn't want to leave you out. Thank you. Thank you, Connor. Uh, next item on the agenda are our committee reports, and I'll kick it off with the board operations committee that met on February 14th. Uh, we have a, a consent agenda, agenda item today uh, about renaming the Rensselaer rail station. So several community leaders, including assembly member John McDonald and Mark Egan of the chamber, has approached us with an idea of renaming the Rensselaer rail station after the late Senator Joseph Bruno. <coughs> Senator Bruno was born and raised in the capital region and was a champion for upstate New York, as we all know. He was an advocate for improved infrastructure and a tremendous supporter <coughs> of the Rensselaer rail station. He and his staff were very helpful during that construction period to getting the station completed and help secure the valuable funding needed to get the project over the finish line. A few of us met with the group advancing the idea and they made a very compelling case. And based on these discussions, uh, the Board Operations Committee recommends that we adopt a resolution to name the Rensselaer uh, Rail Station after Senator Joseph L. Bruno and an appropriate ceremony will be held sometime in the future. But at this time, I am asking for a motion in support of uh, naming uh, the Rensselaer Rail Station after Senator Bruno. Can I get a motion on that? Thank you, Dave. Second, Peter. Any uh, discussion? We mentioned this uh, previously to most of the members. I think everyone's aware. Uh, any comments? You, uh, Mr. Chair, if Jamie, I can... uh, this is Pat. I'm not sure if you can hear me. Yes, Pat, go ahead. Yeah, I just, uh, Senator Bruno, um, my family's been involved in youth in uh, Lansingburg, you know, for a very long time. And any anything between the Boys Club or any youth organizations, Senator Bruno was always there for us. So I just wanted to make that comment. You know, he was very good to uh, to us in uh, in Lansingburg. Thank you, Pat. Hey, thank you, Jamie. Um, just just to share kind of our process of going through this, I guess. I mean, Jamie touched on the highlight of how this came to be. Um, I think our group kind of all had the same question, though. You know, it was kind of like, why now? I mean, the senator passed away in 2020. Uh, he had been out of the Senate for several years before that, retired from the Senate. And it, it, the, the trains, you know, the rail station had just celebrated its 20th anniversary. So it seemed like this thing was kind of far down the road. Um, the explanation given to us, which, which I fully support, um, while the senator was alive, there was state legislation that prohibited the naming of any public facility in the name of the elected official. So... Unfortunately, this is one of those things that you have to die to get. Um, the senator passed in 2020, which, as we all know, was right in the midst of COVID. 
So the timing for bringing this to us any sooner by the community members that are asking us to support this um, really, really wasn't, it wasn't the right time. It wasn't a good time to do that. So um, I spent a lot of time with the Senator. My mom worked with the Senator for decades. Um, I remember answering the phone at home when he would call for her. Uh, I, was, I was a little guy, though I did live at home until I was 30. Uh, and, then, and then my wife took me in. <laughs> But um, he was a great supporter of public transportation. He was a huge supporter of building not only the Rensselaer Rail Station, but supported the Saratoga Springs Rail Station, and also had led an effort, uh, well, there have been several. He led the most recent effort to bring high-speed rail to the capital region to improve train times from Albany to New York City and further south. So I think, uh, you know, I think this is a great honor uh, that we can bestow on him, even though he's not with us. Um, I think it, it serves to recognize him for his leadership to our greater community, the whole 518, uh, but also for his specific support for public transportation. So um, I'm, I'm happy that we're doing this. Um, I'm sure his family will be thrilled. And everybody that we've talked to has been very supportive of, of this, uh, the public folks that we've talked to. So. I think it's a great thing to do and the right thing to do. So thank you. Okay. I just uh, want everyone to know in the room, board, board members know this, uh, we made sure that due diligence was done. <coughs> we wanted to make sure that um, all of our partners and supporters uh, understood what we were doing, why we were doing it, and everything came back thumbs up. Um, we didn't find anyone who thought this was too far out there. Um, it was basically what Dave said um, and what Pat said. It was echoed over and over and over again. And I think you're going to be surprised when you see the community leaders who are behind this and really uh, spurred it on. They'll, they'll be at the event. Um, really the who's who in the community who recognize what the senator did. I was just a kid, too. I was you know, only here 20 years. And I remember some of the problems that we building a $54 million public facility. Um, and I, we know who came to the rescue more often than not. Um, there were a lot of rescues. Um, and thank God for you know, the senator and his staff. His staff was, his staff was fabulous. Anyone else? Hearing nothing else, all those in favor of renaming the rail station after Senator Joseph L. Bruno say hi. Aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstentions, it's approved. Thank you, everyone. Uh, the other items on our uh, meeting agenda, uh, we reviewed the uh, agendas and activities for all the June meetings that were held last week. Uh, CARM did provide an update on uh, some of the end of session of bills that were uh, passed in the state legislature and are expected to be signed by Governor Hochul. Uh, one bill will make it easier for not for profit operators to acquire car sharing insurance uh, that was passed. That's certainly important to us. And the other, a bill amended public authorities law to include Warren County as a member of the authority, which is terrific. Uh, CARM uh, reviewed the year end report for the company work plan. Lots of accomplishments over the past year and uh, more things happening as we move forward. Uh, the next meeting of the committee is uh, slated for Wednesday, September 6th at 9.15 here at 1.10 Waterloo Avenue. Uh, we'll move on to the next report, which is the Performance Monitoring uh, Audit Committee. Uh, Dan Lynch has the report. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, my first report out to the full board, so I'm excited. And it's lengthy, so uh, <laughs> it's the only way to come out of the game. Yeah, here we go. All right. The uh, performance monitoring and audit committee committee uh, met on uh, noon at noon on June twenty first uh, here at one ten Ward Lead Ave and by Teams. There are several uh, consent agenda items. I believe six that we'll go through that need approval. The first being the approval of a contract for commuter buses. We need to replace two commuter buses as part of our fleet replacement <coughs> program. These buses are used for Northway and Thruway Express services. We will acquire the buses off the Commonwealth of Virginia contract, but we'll purchase them directly from Motor Coach Industries. Delivery is expected in early 2024. At this time, uh, staff recommends this contract, and we need a motion to approve the purchase of two vehicles from Motor Coach Industries, Inc. of 
Schamburg, Illinois, for a total price of $1,762,435. Peter, thank you for the motion. Second? Second. Second. Thank you. Thank you. I think it's Schaumburg, for Schaumburg. those of us who've been out that way. A suburb of Chicago. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes. Any comments or <laughs> questions regarding uh, this contract? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? It's approved. Keep going. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Just start. <laughs> Next is the approval of purchase of 40 foot buses. This is our annual order of 40 foot buses, which is part of our fleet uh, replacement program. We have a five year contract with Gillig to purchase vehicles. Staff recommends purchasing 18 vehicles. There has been a 10% price increase, 5% more than the contract allows due to hyperinflation and the cost of raw materials. The committee discussed this. Delivery was expected summer of 2024. Uh, we'll need a motion to approve the purchase of 18 40-foot buses from Gillig, Livermore, California, for a price of $10 million, or $10,977,314. Thank you, Dave. Second by Peter. Any discussion buying 18 buses? I think you all know that we do this every year, but there's a little, a little science behind it. Um, uh, used to be one twelfth of the fleet. This is just a tad more than one twelfth. But uh, the, the idea here is to keep injecting new vehicles into the fleet every year to keep pace with technology. And frankly, back in the old days, um, we used to buy them in large chunks. And it was great to have two hundred, one hundred and fifty new buses roll in. But what we found is because people hadn't seen a new bus in ten years, there were times when we said we don't know how to fix them. Um, this really balances things out. It makes it a lot easier for the organization. It's really been one of the big changes in the last 20 years. Yep, and there was a lot of discussion at the committee level about the upward pricing. Yeah. <clears throat> we don't like it. That's a sign of the times. Uh, any other comments, questions? All those in favor of uh, buying 18 Gillick buses, say aye. 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 Any opposed? None. Thank you. It's approved. Next on the agenda, Resolution 26, the approval of contract for rental and rail station parking management services. Our contract with Republic Parking at the Rensselaer Rail Station is about to expire. A request for proposals was issued and four firms responded. Staff reviewed proposals and recommends Republic Parking are incumbent. The committee had a good discussion about the proposing firms and agreed to move the recommendation to the full board. We need a motion to award a three-year contract with two optional one-year extensions extensions to Republic Parking of Chattanooga, Tennessee, for an amount not to exceed $2,420,000. So moved. Thank you, Mike. Second. Second. Okay. Any uh, questions, comments on the operator? Just a rest? question. Um, we had a discussion at um, that point about other parking, um, I guess, providers, and, and I think there was some follow-up to be done, so we're good. I just wanted to follow back up and just make sure we're good with Republic. And yep, yep. We did, we did some follow up. Um, they're the incumbent. Um, there are others that, that proposed. Um, the scoring was extremely close. Um, I think we put the scoring sheet in the, the full board packet. Extremely close. And frankly, uh, when it's that close, you tend to stay close to home and to stay with the incumbent. However, the incumbent has performed, uh, performed up to ex expectations. Uh, you know, it's sort of what, what's your choice of flavors? I like on, I like on. Uh, it, it's that close. And by the way, this is the operation, not the software. It's the people who take tickets, and man the booths, and things of that nature. They manage the facility. Yep, it's the labor service that we need labor. to make it work. Yep. Yep. <coughs> Any other questions on this? All those in favor of the resolution say aye. 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 Any opposed? It's approved. All right, next on the agenda is resolution 27, approval of contract extension for WWBRT design and construction. Our design and construction contract with Creighton Manning is expiring and an extension is needed to complete the WWBRT project. 
extension allows for post design changes, roundabout and cross gates, and other improvements, including the Harriman station. Contract is not a guarantee of work, and task will be approved on a case by case basis. Costs are under budget in the small starts grant that funds this project. We need a motion to award a two year contract extension with two one year extensions to Creighton Manning of Albany for an amount not to exceed $6,225,000. Making a motion on this. Peter, second by Dave. Any comments, questions about uh, Creighton Manning's contract here? I think as we explained in the committee meeting, the contract is up. We still have work to do. There may be more work to follow, so we wanted to get the contract part set, get them ready to go. Um, there really is no other alternative to Creighton Manning. We want to finish what we started, uh, and, and they've been with us a step away. Frankly, they're as good as their de facto staff right now. It's probably Anything else? All those in favor of retaining Creighton Manning on this contract, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Georgie is abstaining. Uh, contract is approved. Next, Resolution 28 is approval of contract for on-call planning services. We continue to grow our service area and need assistance to undertake new projects to enhance our network. We issued a request for proposals for an on-call planning services to engage in a variety of planning tasks. We received 20 proposals. Staff review proposals and recommends awards to eight firms we can select from based on specific needs, much like panel counsel in the legal department. We need a motion to award a three-year contract with two optional one-year extensions not to exceed $150,000 per year to the following. FHI Studio, Sam Schwartz Engineering, MJ Engineering and Land Surveying, Bergman Architects, CHA Companies, Creighton Manning Engineering, Arcadis IBI Group, and Kittleson and Associates. You got a uh, motion to approve? So moved. Thank you, Mike. Second, Peter. Any comments or questions on on this item? A little different for us. Uh, first time we're doing it this way, but uh, we actually we do business with I think seven out of the eight or six out of the eight. Um, it, I think it really shows you the amount of activity that we have going on and anticipated where we're going to need services. So rather than every single time, you know. Um, here on the street, this gives us sort of you know, the Rolodex from the, the whatever. Um, what did I show my age there? Um, the corral of the corral of, of consultants. <laughs> it's easier to, to get this done this way. So I think it's a, a sign of the times and a sign of progress. Anything else? All those in favor of the resolution say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Extensions. Thank you. Georgie, uh, the resolution is approved. All right. And our final consent item is uh, resolution 29. This is the approval of the drug and alcohol policy. The annual review of the drug and alcohol policy is required by federal regulations and CDTA requirements. There was one regulatory change and one administrative change made to the policy document. The revised policy is included in the packet. We need a motion to approve the drug and alcohol policy. Motion made by Peter Wall. Can I get a second? Dave? We do this every year, Carm? Every year. Every, every year. Like clockwork. Several things we do painfully every year. <laughs> Kelly just loves bringing this to <laughs> With a word change. Yeah. yeah. Uh, if there's uh, no objection, all those in favor say aye. 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 It's, I'm sorry. Want to jump in? I just wanted to point out that, although it's not a change, I mean, well, it's a change. Um, policy recognizes um, cannabis. Uh, there has been some confusion uh, when cannabis was legalized. So that means I can smoke pot. Legal for you to do it. You can't work if you have a certain level of cannabis in your system. So the policy recognizes that. So that's really, the, I think, a step in the right direction. 
Right, let's start this again. All those in favor of the approving the policy say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? It's approved. <clears throat> All right, moving on to a number of administrative discussion items. The first being our annual accident review, which NASO gave the annual report on accidents. There were 447 accidents in fiscal year 2023, a slight increase from last year. Most common preventable accidents, 40% of them occurred on property. Initiatives for fiscal year 24 is to reduce accidents include introducing a hands-on defensive driving program, and phase two pilot of the mirrorless bus. The report is in the packets. Next uh, report was our annual work workplace safety report. Jack Grogan gave the annual workplace uh, safety report. Work injuries decreased a bit this year with the most common injuries to the back and shoulder. Overall, workers' compensation costs decreased $460,000. Workplace initiatives in fiscal year 24 include strengthening claims, strengthening claims management by determining root cause and immediate employee contact after reported incidents. The report is also in your packets. The next report is the monthly management report. Mike Collins gave the monthly management report. MRT is 16% under budget, but has trended higher over the past four months. Customer revenue was slightly under budget and Rental rail station revenue is up 10% for the year. Wages were under budget because of continuing headcount challenges. You're in a good financial position. I believe the final report is the monthly non-financial performance report. Chris Dasney gave the non-financial report. <coughs> Fixed route ridership is up 24% <coughs> this month and 25% for the year. Star ridership is up 14% for the month and 11% for the year. Fixed route on-time performance was at 71%, and star on-time performance was at 80%. We changed how we, we report missed trips for the actual number to a percentage. We missed 0.6% of all scheduled trips. Many other similar size transit properties report missing 5% or more of their scheduled trips. Denise, are you sure you do not want to chair this? <laughs> That's a lot from me. Uh, the next meeting of the committee is scheduled for September 13th of this year at 110 Waterbleed Ave. or on Microsoft Teams. Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Dan, good job. Yeah. Uh, Great job. <laughs> <laughs> not taking it back. <laughs> uh, we'll move on to the uh, community and state. Stakeholder Relations Committee, David Stackrow. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The Community and Stakeholder Relations Committee met on June 22nd at 11.15, both in person and via Microsoft Teams. Staff provided updates on a recent community values survey, the slate of summer services, and the monthly earned media and community engagement report. John Scherzer provided an update on our recent community values survey. The survey outlined how CDTA is perceived in the business community. TransPro interviewed more than 20 business leaders in the capital region. Survey questions centered around CDTA's relevancy in the community, how we are perceived in the community, and how our services benefit the region. The results of the survey were outstanding and showed that business and community leaders value CDTA and the services we provide. <clears throat> they acknowledge that we are an integral part of the communities we serve and would like to see that continue. Some areas for improvement were suggested, included, including providing more reduced fare services to disadvantaged or underserved populations in the community. A random survey directed towards individual households is currently underway with results expected in the next quarter. John also provided an update on our summer services, which will begin to roll out on June 28th. These include the Saratoga Seasonal Trolley, OGS Ride the Plaza Tours, the Schenectady Nature Bus, and service to Grafton Lake State Park. These services connect our communities, especially young people who may not be able to take advantage of summer activities without the services. Jamie Caslow provided the monthly earned media and community engagement report. Last month, CDTA earned 15 media placements in television and newspaper. Stories focused on the legislation to adopt Warren County into our charter so that we can provide service there. 
coverage of our CDTA job fair that was held and our involvement with several community activities. CDTA participated in a number of local events to highlight our work, including the Pride Parade, Juneteenth festivities in Albany, and Memorial Day parades. We are assisting Schenectady County with their early voting schedule. So we're done with at this point, since the vote was yesterday. Jamie outlined social media engagement and provided statistics for the last month. We saw an increase of 450 followers on our Facebook page, bringing the total number of followers to almost 7,000. Top posts included Get to Know the Nature Bus and information on our merger with Warren County. Looking ahead, we will continue to promote service changes, which took effect on June 25th, and preparing for the one-year anniversary of service in Montgomery County later this summer. The next meeting of the committee will be held on Thursday, September 14th at 11.15 a.m. via Microsoft Teams and in person at 110 where we need have. Unless there are questions, Thank you, Dave. Next committee report is uh, Strategic and Operational Planning Committee, Mike Prashant. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the committee met last Thursday, 12 p.m. here at 110 Waterville Dev and via Microsoft Teams. We had one administrative discussion item regarding the summer and fall service changes. Ross Farrell reviewed the planned service changes for this June, September, and November. The planning department works closely with business development and transportation to collect, analyze, implement, and monitor service recommendations. Our objective is to improve service to existing customers and to create new service for potential new ones. This is accomplished by targeting a combination of high ridership routes, having a positive impact on coverage and driver availability. Much of the seasonal work was discussed in the Community and Stakeholder Relations Committee meeting. June service changes include improving the 100 and 110 belts, the 114 on Washington Avenue, and two Amsterdam routes. The changes in Amsterdam will help build a foundation for providing service along Route 5S, the distribution centers, later in the year. We will also be adding trips to the shopping buses and the Red Line BRT. In September, we will add service to the 87, 114, and 351. We will also look at connecting to FMCC and the centers of 5S. Additionally, we will be adding service in Albany and Schenectady and adjusting the Blue Line BRT. In November, we will be launching the anticipated Washington Western BRT and modifying the local routes along that corridor. The next meeting of the committee will be September 14th here at 110 Waterville Dev and via Microsoft Teams. And that concludes my report, unless there's other comments or questions. Thank you, Mike. Mm -hmm. Ember. Yeah. As long as it's long. Summer off. Uh, next item on the agenda is the CEO report. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I was just sitting here thinking that our governance consultant, Doug Beatty, would be proud. He told me on many occasions that you know, board, the board meetings themselves should be ceremonial. We should celebrate you know, what the board decides is important. Our board has decided that what's important to our employees, we celebrate them almost every month. Uh, and board members will report at the goings on and the actions and activities in the committees. Uh, I mean, basically, it, it works as intended. Uh, we go to dance. And, you know, I know you were a little nervous here stepping in for Denise, who's you know, been a rock, but you just spent more than $20 million. <laughs> 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 but, you know, we, 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 and we do that easily and, and aggressively because it was a good deal of discussion about almost every one of those agenda items. And some of them, I don't think everyone agreed with. You know, we, we got to a point where, where um, it was good enough um, to, to bring to the full board. And the full board has confidence in the committee structure and, and pretty much you know, goes along. Board members can ask questions. They can bring up anything they want. Substantial work is done in the committees. That's sort of the foundation. 
recommendation as far as that goes, how it works. I talked to other CEOs and other boards <coughs> about this. And most of them can't get over the, well, why don't you have a human resource committee? Why don't you have a this committee? That, that. We don't need that. We just kind of funnel these under our smaller, our bigger umbrellas and move along. I think we move along quite nicely. Um, well, Dave and, and Mike's report reflect you know, the growing the growing organization. <clears throat> we recognize you know the human resource realities. They're real. Um, we need to recruit, but we're finding ways to expand service. And some of them are small expansions, but you know, you both mentioned you know the different things that are either hap that happened on the 25th of June or will happen in late <clears throat> August and then into November. Um, and it's, I wish we didn't have to do it this way. I wish we could just you know, add heads and, and just move forward, but we can't. So the planning, the planning and operations departments are working together to find new ways to, or creative ways to schedule. And really doing a good job. You're seeing a lot of frequency improvements, you know, some span improvements where we're operating earlier or later. Um, and we're really, you know, we have no shortage of service requests out there. Like more, we just unfortunately can't do everything right now. Um, well, I was at, yesterday or the day before, I was out at Crossgates, and, and it, it, the, the roundabout is almost done, and, and it is striking. It is striking uh, because what our what our team did with you know our construction crews, is they did this while traffic like moved around them, literally. So you know, hats off to. Jeremy and his gang of people who, it's just amazing to me that they got this done without literally closing the ramp for, you know, like for three months. Um, you know, there are still, you know, doubters that say, uh, roundabouts don't work, but every traffic engineer in the, you know, in upstate New York says they do. So um, if you're out there, take a peek. It's, 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 it's pretty impressive. Ridership uh, is up again. That indicated, I think this indicated in his report, we're up 20% you know, for the first two months. Uh, customer revenue, by the way, is up 20% versus last year, but it, it's not going to show up in the budget. We added 30% uh, to the revenue line. We said, hey, let's be real. It, it's real, but it, it continues to improve, so, so that, that's a good thing. Uh, at the same time, our you know, staff has been busy. Uh, you know, the Mike Gambrells have been busy as we, you know, work towards the merger. Um, just to be clear, uh, Glens Falls is merging into our system. We're, you know, <coughs> I, I take a little offense to, you know, they're, you know, we're merging. Not we're, we're, we're taking them and we're going to assume the operation. And eventually, um, we'll make it better. Uh, after some expected delays and, you know, John Scherzer took this one personally. We give him a lot of credit. Uh, he, he didn't like this, but we knew it was going to be delayed. But CDPHP cycle is out there and, and, and rolling. Uh, we're adding bikes literally every day. Um, about 125 are out there right now. And they're all the new bikes, uh, the, the, the pedal assist. I was talking to Lindsey Brad this morning. People love them. Um, they're not quite sure what they love yet, but, but they, they love it. It's... it's um, Nicer way to travel. I mean, you can pedal. You have to pedal, but um, if, you, if you get tired, you can you can take a break. Um, we expect ridership will be out of sight uh, soon. It's already up. It's already up. up. According to Shirley, it's already up. Out of the box. Um, not that we didn't expect mobility hub. Jamie and I were there. Uh, I think two weeks ago. He, that's starting to take shape. So if you're, State Street, take a peek. Uh, maybe, maybe Senator Schumer will be back. Um, I forget this. I don't mention this every month, but you know, we continue to move along with our diversity, equity, and inclusion work. It's constant, and we're realizing that you can't put like a calendar to it because it's never over. It's, it's just a constant work in progress. Um, We've just about completed all that survey work that we talked about and the outreach at, internally, and we're expecting, we reviewed some of the data, so it's got a preview, uh, and we're expecting a report in about a month or so. 
So when we get that, we'll share it with you. It'll be our first stab at what do what does our workforce think of the company as it relates to DEI um, and that sort of global heading. About a little under a third of the workforce participated. Um, probably about as good as we could have expected on the first shot. Um, it's a very difficult workforce to, to get a hold of and engage. And, you know, honestly, I'm not sure people want to do that kind of thing. So um, it's a first shot. Um, it not only will um, our consultant tangible development provide the report to us, but they're going to provide some recommendations, like what are the things you ought to be doing next? And I don't want to forget, we're, we're, we're also um, participating in the APTA pilot program, which gives us sort of a perspective, like what is everyone else in our industry doing? Uh, and I'll tell you, we're right in the middle of the pack. I don't think there's anybody a whole way ahead of us. Uh, and there's no one way behind us. We're kind of right in the middle. Everyone's doing similar. So that's for you, Don. <laughs> um, speaking of it, Don, and, and perfect timing. The, the negotiating teams, I think they're, they're all in the room. I think the whole, are you guys going to negotiate during the meeting? Um, we'll wait till after. They continue to work. Uh, continue to work. Uh, they met twice this week and met twice last week. Um, and, you know, they've, I know by I've seen all of them, they've pledged to keep working um, until this is done. And, and I'm confident that we'll, we'll end up in a place that's good for, for both sides and good for our employees. Just to note, the contract expired June 12th, so we're technically without a contract. But not in, in the labor world, So we'll, we'll keep moving forward. A couple weeks ago, I, I know I've talked to some of you about this. We had 100 retirees uh, descend on uh, CDTA. We turned, well, we, Jamie, uh, Emily, and Vanessa turned the garage into an event venue. I, I think we're going to put it out for hire. Uh, it, was, it was, you know, it was almost as good as the Stack Row wedding chairs, if you remember that a few years back. Um, but the thing was turned into a, a, an event venue, and we, we invited them back. It kind of came from, I, I go to too many wakes of people who, CDTA people who passed away, and you'd see a retiree at a wake, and hey, I hear this is happening, or I drove to down Warehouse Road, and I saw the parking lot. You know, what else are you guys doing there? So we, we had them all here, and gave them a, they got tours, and Short pictures, things of that nature, and they were just, they were just, it was just over the top. Um, you know, Pat was here, Pat Lance was, Pat was dual role, right? He was a retiree <laughs> and board member. Dan was in between hamburger visits, he came through, we couldn't twist his arm to, to have a hamburger, but it was just, it was uh, just over the top. So maybe we'll start renting out the, uh, the garage. A couple things, um, I think. Most of you know Bill Carpenter. He, he did my job in Rochester uh, for 11 years um, and also was, uh, was uh, president of NIPTA for the past six. He retired. Uh, he decided finally to pull the plug. Uh, Jamie and I went out to his retirement ceremony. It was a ceremony um, uh, out at RGRTA. Uh, just good to see him. Good to see, good to see their um, level of community support. You know, lots of people there. Thank him and thank RGRTA. So, <coughs> wanted you to know that. Um, a couple of you were at the United Way Awards, uh, annual awards, and I got to introduce the philanthropist of the year, who's a fellow by the name of Brian Barr. Uh, some all many people know the work that Brian has done, um, really in the suicide world, um, suicide world for older adults. He's, he's been a counselor, and a, a helper, and I, it was a great honor for me to do that. Um, lots of you were at the uh, chamber. Chamber Award. We were there with 1,200 of our closest friends. Uh, great to see all of you there. And um, we also, as part of our diversity, equity, and inclusion uh, work, went to the Business Review uh, Awards uh, luncheon last last week. We had a full table, and our table was diverse. And our table was at all levels of the company. So, just little things like that. I think told tell me that we're we're making progress. It may not be much, but 
it's progress here and there. So we're also learning you have to celebrate that stuff. Because if you don't, it's just kind of just, just look at that. It's just another thing, not just a good thing. So that's it. Um, we can meet in August if you want, Mr. Chair. But um, if not, happy summer. <clears throat> Thank you, Carr. Good report. Anybody have any questions for Carr while we've got him at the table? Got a mic on him. <laughs> any uh, comments from board members on any topic? Hearing none, then our uh, next uh, board meeting is scheduled for September 20th, 12 noon, here at 110 Waterville Avenue. Everyone have a great summer. Hope to see you in the meantime. Otherwise, I'll take a motion to adjourn. Peter, second by Dan. Uh, we're adjourned. Have a great summer. Thank you. Have a great summer. <laughs>